package. The one that I don't have here is the Visions for Black Men, okay. uh, which really kind of deals with the specific issues that black men have in understanding what it means to be a man. And I talk about in that book uh, 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 this idea that we think that manhood is like pants on the ground. You know, how, you know, how many rings you got on the finger, your, your fingers. Uh, being able to be a pimp and a hustler, you know. And that somehow, or a woman means how many men you can make look at you rather than respect you. And so what I talk about in that book is that manhood and womanhood is different from maleness and femaleness. And I talk about the fact that in traditional African societies, the way that people were taught to become men, women, fathers, and mothers is that they were taught that by rites of passage, and they went through a process to understand that a man, a male is what you start off as, a boy is what you become, and a man is what you must learn. A female is what you start off as. You, are t you become a girl and you, become, you are taught how to be a woman. What's the difference? Those are people who somehow begin to develop an appreciation for what their higher skills and responsibilities are as being able to take their gender and use their gender in constructive and responsible kinds of ways. So the visions for black men was sort of done in a very simple kind of way to say, look, your manhood is not who you can beat up, how many balls you can uh, shoot in a, into a hoop, or how fast you can run on a football field. Or how many women you can chase after. Or how many after. women you can chase after. Mm -hmm. Or on the other, the other part that's so bad these days, how many different babies you can have from different men. You know, to, uh, I got to take my baby and push my baby to, baby to the mall, you know, that your <laughs> new outfit just somehow is going to make you a woman. I mean, all of those superficial, materialistic ideals that are fed to us through the media has to have to do with the fact that we're still trying to be males and females rather than men and women. And we can't leave that up for granted. We can't leave that up to the media. So we must understand it as a process. A concept that I talk about in one of my books, Visions for Black Men, is how the process of becoming a man is just that, a process. Many people never make it because we start off as males. Now, maleness is a biological process. It is identified by certain physiological expressions and manifestations. It is something that usually goes without debate, except in very strange and bizarre cases of mutations in the genitalia area that the doctors are baffled by because they can't determine which of the things that is manifested is the real manifestation of what's really there, so therefore they aren't sure. Usually we know beyond a doubt. Often now, even with the sonogram prior to birth, Shortly after conception, we can determine that this child will be a male or a female. Simple biological indicators tells us about maleness. And maleness as well comes as simply a set of biological instincts. Maleness requires limited consciousness. It is the consciousness that comes with the packaging. And therefore, that maleness is something that it offers a potential to grow into manhood, but it's not there yet. So for much of the early life, we don't expect too much more than the expression of the male. Males operate out of the basis of their own biological needs. Males uh, get hungry, they want to eat. Males need to go to the bathroom, they wet. Males get hungry, they cry, doesn't matter what time of night. Males concerned about nobody but themselves. Males are concerned about their own appetites, their own pleasure, their own needs. Whatever turns the male on is what the male wants and the male doesn't matter who the male has to bother in order to make himself happy for the moment that he wants to be happy. When his happiness is past, he goes to sleep. That's what males do.
So males, a male nest represents a consciousness. It represents a consciousness. And that consciousness characterizes the earliest expression of this potential, of this evolution, just like the worm, or the, just like the caterpillar that constitutes like the beginning processes. What the caterpillar does is what it was made to do in that stage of its evolution. And it eats, it eats, it eats, it eats. It feeds itself, it eats up all the leaves, it wipes out the community, it doesn't worry about the other caterpillars, just itself. But that's the nature of the male mind, which is like the caterpillar mind. So this earliest expression of maleness is the process of consciousness that lays the foundation for future growth. Now, if we grow as we should and placed in the proper environment, fed by the leaves of knowledge, fed by the leaves of light, fed by the sunlight, fed by the community of life, fed by the things that cultivate our development, then that caterpillar, that male, begins to transform and begins to move into another stage of development. But in order for that growth to occur, you've got to be placed in the proper environment. You've got to eat the right kinds of leaves. You've got to drink the right kind of liquid. You've got to be exposed to the right kind of sun. But if you don't get that, you can become fixated in the caterpillar stage, become a fat, hairy worm, and never get out of that stage. So in this process, we must understand, is that many people remain in a consciousness of maleness. And males can become sperm donors, but they don't necessarily become fathers. The mentality of a male is a ment materialistic mentality. It is a selfish mentality. It is a narcissistic mentality. It is an egotistical mentality. It is a mentality that doesn't permit them to see outside of themselves and their own needs. Now, if this male begins to grow, it gradually becomes a boy. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that it is appropriate for a male to be a male. You don't expect babies to be considerate. They don't have discussions with you, oh, mother dear, I'm sorry. I have a disturbance in my gastrointestinal system and I would be very grateful if you would provide me the nourishment for which you are more capable of attaining than I am at this time. You don't expect that of babies. Babies get hungry, they yell, they scream, they wake you up and bring you out to do what you, they need done. That's the nature of the, 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 the child. That's the nature of the male. You don't expect anymore. You don't expect the child to be considerate of anyone else's feelings. But hopefully, that child, that male, will begin to evolve and become a boy. Boys have another orientation. They are certainly more developed than males. They've learned how to restrain themselves a little bit they at least begin to ask permission or attend to other people to some extent, at least for the purpose of taking care of their own needs. So the best description of, of boys is that they are players. They know how to play. And boys play well. They play you for what they want. They play you for their gratification. They play you for their pleasure. They are players. And I'm not doing it on player hate neither, just talking about the nature of the player. So that's the mentality of boys. Boys have expanded a little bit to consider others, but only to the degree to which others can satisfy their needs. So they are still primarily selfish. They are still primarily self-involved but they have become the kinds of players who consideration is primarily using others for their own objective. So players, boys like males, are moving, they are progressing, they are evolving, they are appropriate to a certain stage, but they've not yet become men. The caterpillar, after having been fed, enfolds itself in a silken environment. It enfolds itself into an environment then that cuts off the external processes 
and begins to release the inner growth processes. The caterpillar is wrapped up into this chrysalis, and the chrysalis is a rich environment that permits transformation within the darkness of the inner life. In much the same way, in the proper societal uh, environment, the boy is wrapped up in the culture. The culture begins to surround them like the chrysalis. It begins to inspire them to go inside to express the potential for growth that's inside of themselves. The society, like the chrysalis, encircles them and forces them to somehow be transformed in much the same way as boys begin to interact appropriately in the society, as they gain knowledge, as they gain insight, as they learn to love, they begin to be transformed and pushed and expanded so that what used to be selfishness, self-involvement, self-consideration, ultimately, they begin to feel and think in a bigger sense. And the first indication that they are moving towards a greater growth is when these boys begin to learn how to relate to other people. When they begin to be concerned about somebody other than themselves. One of the clearest indications that boys now are moving towards manhood is when their minds have grown big enough to think about somebody other than themselves. When they begin to experience the mutual responsibility, the mutual recipro reciprocity that goes into a relationship, when they're capable of having a mate, having a friend, having someone who they can be as concerned about as they are concerned about themselves. The indication that the mind has grown big enough to move beyond the narrow limitations of just this male creature, just this young boy creature, is when this person now has begun to care enough about another person that they aren't happy unless their mate is happy. They're not happy unless their friend is happy. When they're, they aren't fed until their friend is fed. That somehow the sense of completion is no longer limited to what they can get for themselves. There's a consideration that there's someone else. Now this becomes a critical stage of pressure because there's a new kind of tension now. Because the demand to look out for somebody other than just you is such a pressing demand that it begins to grow your concept of who you are. So self is no longer just this narrow thing caught in this protoplasm. Self becomes something that transcends just body because it's preparing you to reconnect with the universal person which you are. But you have to grow back into that consciousness even though you came out of that consciousness. You must evolve back to that consciousness and it must be done by going into the chrysalis that begins to put pressure on your consciousness that transforms it and makes it bigger than the ego that comes from the biology. Now, the process then of learning to love another person, relate to another person, be concerned about another person continues to grow. And as it grows, the person becomes capable then of thinking bigger than just their companion, just their mate, just their friend, just their loved one. The person begins to think so big now that they can begin to think about those potential children that belongs to that partnership. So in order to grow and to become a real man, you have to develop the capacity to think like a father. Now, the father mind has nothing to do with one's physical anatomy. That's taken care of by the biological principle. The real principle of fatherhood requires a consciousness that has grown so big that you are no longer preoccupied with what happens to just you or what happens to just your mate but you are now concerned about what happens to the children. And the children then give you a greater push 
for even a bigger consciousness. Because you understand, the children can't be healthy until the society is healthy. So men then become inspired to go out and transform the society to make it a rich environment so the children can be safe in it, they can be protected in it, they can grow in it, they can fulfill their potential. So what men do is go out and begin to transform the whole world to make it a better place for everybody to live in. Now, when you get to that level, when you wake up every morning, ready to go out and change the world. When you wake up every morning to know that you've got to go build some more schools and write some more dramas and create some more songs and write another book and create another concept and create another form of technology, bring together material resources in such a way that they can be implemented to transform the living possibilities of the people, be able to transform the health possibilities of people, be able to transfer the possibility of ensuring the highest degree of health and the highest degree of happiness, to be able to bring about the kind of color, to bring about the kind of spirit that generates the best possibilities in all people. When you wake up every day determined to be that, then you become a father. You've grown to become a father. One of the devastating things that happen to us as African people is the fact that we had a serious disruption in the natural balance of our system. Those forces that culture constantly reaffirms, that history culturally reaffirms, every generation is reminded of the responsibility of being aware of and sustaining the nature of the balance within the family system. African culture is a very, very intent upon insisting that every generation should learn its special responsibility as a recipient of the benefits of and a manifestation and a responsibility to preserve balance. So manhood is not something that is taken for granted, it's taught explicitly consistently by those elders with the highest achievement of manhood. Womanhood isn't assumed as something that occurs just as a biological process, it's taught. And so the women are, in, uh, the girls are initiated into womanhood. The boys are initiated into manhood. Because this idea that people should play effectively and understand the nature of balance and their role in the balance is a key part of that. 